So what is wrong with this code? You know, obviously I, I just kind of threw it on there, and so you know, take a look at it. And what, what might be wrong with it? Well, if we kind of remember the concept of a loop for a second, if I have a loop statement that is in fact true, then I do all of this code right here. I do all of this, and then when I'm done, I move back to the top and reassess what is going on. So the idea, what do you think is going wrong? Well, let's look at what's being executed when it's true. Some changes. However, I, you know, if we take a look at the old code, what we were just dealing with, I goes up by one. I is not going up anymore. So what happens to I? Well, i is still only 1, and i never changes from 1. What this actually does is this results in something known as an infinite loop. Very bad. Not, well, you know, I say very bad for what we're going to be doing in class, very bad. It's actually not that terrible. Uh, you can think that your ATM, your computer, uh, the self-checkout line at Lowe's, all of those things run off of an infinite loop. They are just constantly waiting. Now for our sake, for the beginning when we're just learning uh, looping, not so much. We want to have programs that run specifically, you know, X number of times and then they're done. We don't want them to always be one. So what we have to do is we have to make sure to change the conditional. Not just I, not just I, but every time I go through my loop, I have to change how my conditional statement is being evaluated. I have to make sure that at some point in time, either this I is going to change, or I know that it's impossible, but this guy has to change. It, it, that 100 is impossible, so we have to make sure that I always changes when we're working with a loop. Our conditional statement always changes when we're working with a loop.